let's talk about the differences between exposing for photography and exposing for video. As you know, when it comes to exposing correctly for photography, the three main pillars are your aperture, your shutter speed, and ISO. These tools allow you to create sharp, well-exposed photos, and you're most likely very familiar with how they work. Here's how things change slightly when shooting video. Your aperture, of course, controls the amount of light the lens will allow in. A large aperture of f2.8 lets in more light than a small aperture of, say, f16, which lets in less light. Aperture is a key component for controlling depth of field when shooting video footage. You set the aperture purely based on how much of the image you wish to have in focus. Shutter speed, as covered in another video, is the amount of time the shutter on your camera is allowed to stay open in stills. When you take a photograph, the shutter opens and fully exposes the sensor to light that has passed through the lens. In video, the shutter doesn't actually open and close, rather an electronic simulation occurs. Your shutter speed in video primarily affects the amount of motion blur you choose in your sequence. ISO is an artificial boost in the amount of sensitivity your camera sensor has to light. Generally, when taking well-exposed photos, you would adjust this last, as too high an ISO can result in camera noise. While these are all key elements for exposing correctly in photography, things work a little differently when it comes to video. As we spoke about in another video, your shutter speed is fixed in order to achieve consistent motion blur, so we can't really rely on that to assist our exposure. So that means we need to rely on other sources to get our videos exposed properly. Firstly, you'll want to set your aperture. When you want to shoot shallow depth of field images with enough exposure, you'll select a fast aperture of say f2.8, which will allow a lot of light into the camera. However, if you're shooting outside on a bright sunny day, it may be just too bright for the sensor and you'll have overexposed images. Despite the limitations of a set shutter speed and an optimal ISO, there is another tool you may not be overly familiar with coming from a photography background, and that is variable ND filters. When shooting video using the A7 Mark III, you can take advantage of external variable ND filters. You simply attach them to the end of your lens. They use dual polarizing filters to increase or decrease the amount of variable ND applied to the scene. This allows you to shoot at wider apertures in brightly lit conditions and rotate the ND to create the correct exposure. One of the advantages the FS5 Mark II has is that it has built-in ND filters that can be selected to give a set amount of ND from 1 quarter to 1 1 28th. However, it also has a unique feature in that it has an electronic variable neutral density filter to dial it in exactly. It also has an auto mode allowing you to manually set your aperture, ISO and shutter speed to suit a given creative intention. Then if the lighting conditions change, you can let the camcorder decide how much adjustment your ND filter needs to provide. I'll touch on this a bit later in the advanced video too. Hi, I'm Dan Lenny. Thank you for watching this tutorial. You can find other useful tutorials and video creation by clicking the link shown. Be sure to click and subscribe to let us help you enhance your skills and be a great video creator.